Hey guys, what's going on? Inception here and welcome to another video. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a new gameplay objective card to review today and it is going to be the gameplay objective Rafinha. So we are taking a look at a card that is five foot nine with high medium work rates, left, fo left footed with four star skill moves and a three star weak foot. In regards to in-game stats, because he has no relevant traits, he only has the flare traits. Um, he has 97 acceleration with 96 sprint speed. Uh, base card stats for shooting is at 98 attacking positioning which is pretty solid hopefully that works really nicely with his high medium work rates we'll take a look at that in game uh finishing at 87 obviously suggests that you need to give this card a sniper chemistry style as with most cards in this game because the game plays absolutely terrible during the daytime um he has 99 shot power which is definitely very helpful for most situations because when your base card stats of shot power is already really high it's very, very helpful to give chemistry styles where you don't necessarily need to improve it, right? So 99 shot power is pretty solid. You're also boosting volleys by a plus 10, as well as penalties by a plus 9. In regards to passing stats, his base card stats are actually pretty solid as well. He's got curve, he's got short passing, he's got vision, uh, which is quite nice. So... Uh, I could potentially see this card being used in any of the attacking areas, whether it be uh, a left mid, right mid, right attacking mid, left attacking mid, maybe even as a can. We will be trying out most of the positions to see how he plays in those areas of the pitch. Um, you know, dribbling stats or base card stats are quite decent, but again, with this sniper chemistry style, I do expect this card to be more responsive in game, especially since he is a five foot nine player, right? So left footed five foot nine should be very, very relevant for a card like this. Very unfortunate that EA doesn't upgrade their weak foot, but nothing, nothing surprises me with this company. Uh, in regards to physical, he does have 94 stamina, which is great. Uh, 70, 72 strength is a little low, but he does have the aggression stats as well. So uh, this card actually actually kind of works out for my first owner Brazilian team because these guys are literally just chilling in there instead of Miranda I think Diego Carlos the Diego Carlos Europa League card would definitely be better the rest I would probably have to buy but don't really care necessarily too much to do that but the team is actually quite nice so the way that we will be lined up in game with the Brazilian squad will be looking like this we'll be using the 4-2-3-1 tactics with Casemiro and Evander playing in the CDM positions and we'll be using Rafinha off to the right attacking position because I want to see if he does um, those cut inside runs right I really like when my players do those cut inside runs to utilize empty space properly in regards to instructions we're going to keep them all on balanced uh, with Texera um, I will tell Texera to be on balance as well. Maybe just stay central because it's off the ball movement with stay central is actually quite solid. And then we'll keep Evander also on stay back while attacking with the fullbacks on stay back while attacking as well. So we'll try him out in the right attack mid position because whether you play him in the right mid position, right attack mid position, we'll be able to see how he plays in game. So let's get into a game, see how he plays with the Brazilian squad and uh, take it from there. Look at Rafinha with the defensive work right there. I am on the tactics, right? I am, yeah. Oh, actually, it's supposed to be defensive on my main account here. Okay, that's way too close, but we're going to try it anyways right there. Um, that random push touch really got to me right there because I would have done like a ball roll touch away from the goalkeeper once he started approaching me. But um, the card's actually kind of solid. He's, he's really light on his feet, which is very helpful for whatever gameplay situation you have. Um, he has like a skinny body type in game, so it's very, very helpful to be able to dribble really quickly, which is super noticeable on the card. Um, it doesn't really feel like his weak foot's being that big of an issue because of the way that he's kind of like moving across the pitch right now, so I'm kind of liking it so far. Oh, he starts to cut inside right there in that situation. Once Juan Pedro started to transition out a little bit, he was starting to move a little bit right there. Little fake shot stop. Oh, well, it's all random right there, but made it work. Did well. Yeah, his uh, his skill moves actually come off really nicely. Um, if he was like a five-star skiller, he would be he would be incredible to use, man, because really, really light on his feet. I'm not too fan uh, too, uh, fan. <laughs> I'm not too fond of how he's moving on the sides, though. If I'm being completely honest with you guys, um, you know, when you use someone like Philippe Anderson on the sides, it's definitely way better uh rafinha doesn't often cut inside as much as i'd like him to in the left attacking mid position um it almost feels like he could potentially make a really good center cam because of how light he feels right like i know i keep saying that but it is a big part of this card 
Like, I feel like when I'm mostly seeing the way that he's running on the pitch, it's mostly like staying out wide, running in a straight line type situation, which I don't personally prefer. Great finesse shot right there, actually. Yeah, I feel like that lightness that he has would be way better in the cam position. So we're going to try him out there instead. Um, and yeah, we'll basically just take it from there because I, I really feel like he could be really good there, actually. Unfortunately, with FIFA, guys, attacking AI is really bad. So players that have 98 attacking positioning, you always have to try it out in-game because the base characteristics of a player always transfer over. And, you know, players don't all move like rare gold Neymar no matter what, you know? We'll take that finish right there with Alex Texera. Nicely done. Off-the-ball movement is very subjective, by the way. It's not necessarily that it makes it terrible, but there is specific patterns that players use on the sides that make them really good right and it's it, those patterns that he doesn't have doesn't necessarily mean that he's a bad player it's just not a personal preference to have he's really fast dude near pole strike nice yeah the card's actually pretty solid it's a pretty solid card so if you're okay with the way that he moves off the ball on the sides then uh you'll definitely like this card a lot i don't really like i said i don't feel like his weak foot is actually being a huge nuisance on the card because he's compensating it. He's compensating for it with how quick he moves on the ball, right? Like his positioning in the attacking areas is actually kind of nice too. Skill moves come off really quickly. You know, finesse shot, not, not necessarily great there, but it wasn't necessarily uh, settled either. But I'm enjoying the card. Oh, that was supposed to be a fake shot, but of course it didn't register it. But, uh... Yeah, I'm noticing that he's rotating a lot with Alex Texera. Like, I actually find Rafinha to be playing the striker position quite often with Texera. Just the rotation that they keep doing with each other. It's funny because maybe his off-the-ball movement would be more ideal in the striker position, regardless of the weak foot that he has because of how good he feels in the ball. Some things I usually tend to say over and over again because it's the main features of the car that really, really stand out. Making it solid, making it not good, right? Ball roll touch. Yeah, those types, of, those types of things are pretty solid to do with the card. I really feel like it was a, a missed opportunity by not giving him 5-star skills because he would have been really nasty with it. It would have been a fun gameplay objective card. Yeah, guys, I kind of want to try him out in the striker position. I don't know, man. I feel like that off-the-ball move would be more noticeable up top because he keeps rotating with Texera, which is, again, not a necessarily a bad thing. It would actually fit this team really nicely if he can play that position, because the finishing increase, as well as the shot power that he already has, regardless of the fact that he doesn't have the weak foot, it could be like a fun variable with the card, right? As the game progresses, I'll try him out on the sides again, just to see if it was just like a... Because it's very... It takes like 20 minutes in-game to see if they make those specific linear runs, and if they don't, they usually don't end up being that great there, but we'll see. I love that left stick dribbling. That was really nice right there. So the cool thing about this free kick in this situation is the fact that he is a left-footed player. So, you know, when it comes to, like, the free kick tactic, you could just use him as a left-footed player, do the free kick tactic where he makes that run, spam the pass to him. He's left-footed, get the ball here, and then try a shot across goal and potentially score it, right? So uh, that is also another variable that's really nice. So if you're right-footed, you kind of do the free kick tactic on the right side. If you're left-footed, you do it on the left side, right? So far, he's okay in the striker position. Um, I'm liking his movement a little bit. I definitely prefer someone like Alex Texera up top in the striker position because the way that he moves up there is actually quite nice. But it is incredibly usable up there for sure. Sometimes off the ball movement, it's not necessarily like the player's off the ball movement is bad. Sometimes you just got to get used to it, right? Um, which is perfectly fine. I can totally do that with this card. He's actually incredibly usable, so... Okay, guys, so uh, camp position I like. Striker, usable, usable. I want to try him on the sides again. I do want to try him on the sides again, and I want to see how he plays. I want to see how he plays with Juan Pedro as a striker, or Texera as the cam. Yeah, let's try that out. Because the way that your, the way that your cams are set up um, basically tells you how they're going to move around the pitch, right? You see how Philippe Anderson actually cuts inside? I want Rafinha to do that often, right? But he really sticks to that side position.
quite often. Like Philippe Anderson, you'll, you can definitely expect him to cut inside more often. Look at him. He's still he's still at the bottom even. That's how much he cuts inside. Um, I don't really feel like Rafinha does that, right? Yeah, he's really responsive, man. He's really, really responsive with that sniper chemistry style. It's it's his off-the-ball movement on the sides that I'm not really completely fond of, but that's exactly where I'd like to put, play him because you could obviously see from a goal-scoring opportunity like that, getting the player on his strong foot on the opposite side to score that near-post angle, which is one of the consistent ways to score in FIFA, is very ideal, right? So... You can see that once I rotated uh, Texera to the uh, side position right there, he actually started to go into the middle instantly, right? So again, guys, very, very important to understand that uh, the other attacking players that you have in your team is going to be very, very important, right? So his off-the-ball movement on the sides might not necessarily be terrible. It's just a situation where Texera doesn't move or Juan Pedro doesn't move in a certain way where he can utilize the empty space in the middle quick enough. But like I was trying to explain to you guys earlier... Players like Neymar consistently do it. It's not something that they have to try out, right? Uh, it's not something that you have to adjust to. They just do it consistently, right? Um, but obviously, the, like, those guys are usually like the top tier meta card, so you should probably expect them to do that constantly. But obviously, with, there's um, higher tiered cards that are team of the seasons that, you know, may potentially not even do it, right? This guy just stopped playing completely. Um, but yeah, you know. All right, guys, so final verdict on this Rafinha card is that with the sniper chemistry style, he's actually incredibly usable in the game. Um, I have two problems with the card. One of the problems is that obviously the three-star weak foot is not necessarily to have nowadays, but it's not necessarily a huge deal either because he actually performs quite well without it. The second thing I didn't like is his off-the-ball movement no matter what team that I actually had uh, chilling in my squad, right? With Texera, with Ron Pedro, or anything like that. Now, with players like Neymar, right? He can move in whatever team you put him in. The way that he understands how other players move and the way that he understands how he should utilize empty space is significantly different to a card like this with 99 attacking positioning, uh, high medium work rates, 94 stamina. He doesn't utilize empty space that well on the sides with the current team that I had. Now, this could be one of those cards where you have to try him out in different types of teams to see if that is what uh, if that's what's influencing his in-game performance in regards to off-the-ball movement. So that was one thing that I really didn't like. I liked his off-the-ball movement in the cam position because the way that he was playing off of Texera was really nice because his attacking positioning were, was more noticeable in those situations. And because he has the light body type, I'm assuming, the lean body type in-game, and his dribbling stats are actually quite solid for base card stats. The sniper obviously increasing it. His dribbling is actually quite responsive. If you get him on his left foot, he's actually really nice. Kind of very similar to Bernardo Silva in that sense where he feels pretty responsive in game in regards to that. It's really nice that his pace for base card stats are actually really good so that, you know, you don't necessarily need to improve it. Very, very important in regards to that as well. So, you know, the only problems that I have with the card is that off the ball movement on the sides with the current team that I had wasn't necessarily great. And uh, obviously the fact that he doesn't have the four star weak foot is a letdown as well. I will also say that if they gave this card a five star skill move upgrade his dribbling would have been super super nice in game because the way that he executes skill moves is actually quite nice so um yeah personal preference with the with the with the off the ball movement you guys might like it depending on the team you put them in um but i just like players that can play in any type of team that i usually put them in so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video today i might have uh two other storyline cards to review today so be sure to be staying i don't know i always mix my words with this Stay tuned for those videos when they do come out. But thank you guys so much for watching this video. I'll catch you guys for the next one. Peace out, dudes. Love you guys.